Hi friends, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra here today at C2 Tactical in Scottsdale, not in the 338 Club today. Asked to get my own bay so that we can talk about a technique that I can't really do from inside the bay. Today, I wanna to clear up just a little bit, I've seen some confusion online about a particular technique utilizing the shotgun of what, what is known as a short stocking technique. And I wanna to talk today, number one, about its historical context so you understand it. Number two, about a couple of use cases that we see using it and why, as a private citizen, you might find a limited use for it. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. I've seen some misinformation about this technique and uh, that stuff frustrates me because uh, it is mainly taught by a couple of guys that I really highly respect. Kind of the godfather of this particular technique is Rob Hot from Simtac Consulting. You've seen recently Neil and I on the channel went and trained with Rob and got a very good understanding of this technique. The other ones who teach it and teach a significant number of shotgun classes is 360 performance shooting. That's Ashton Ray and Tim Chandler, both highly competent shotgun instructors of the highest caliber. In fact, I haven't trained their shotgun class, but a couple of years ago when my son uh, needed a defensive shotgun for his home defense and was in their neck of the woods, he went and took their class and learned immensely from it. So these are the places where this stuff comes from. If you've learned about the short stocking or short stick technique online, almost certainly it came from Chris Baker of Lucky Gunner uh, Ammo. And the Lucky Gunner YouTube channel is phenomenal. I consider Chris to be a strong acquaintance. I don't know that I've earned the right to call myself his friend. You know, we've sat around and, and eaten some meals and taken several classes together. And I think he's a fine human and he makes excellent videos for their YouTube channel. Of course, Lucky Gunner is a sponsor of Active Self Protection, and so that might color things, I suppose, but it really doesn't. Chris is a great guy. Lucky Gunner, I buy ammo from him, so it's good, right? He makes killer videos, like really good quality content, including a video about this technique. Let's put it in its historical context, though, because Chris, he really quickly breezed over that. He said, this has been used in law enforcement and SWAT to great effect for 30 years and then moved on to more of the technique. But I wanna back off from that a little bit because you gotta understand the, the, the history of a technique in order to really get where it comes from. Because it comes from Rob Hot, Simtac Consulting, Rob uh, has been a cop for, gosh, I think 35 years or something like that. And this comes from a law enforcement context. So it comes from the days that your primary long gun as a law enforcement officer wasn't a carbine, wasn't an M4, it was a shotgun. And I really think that the street howitzer has its place in law enforcement still. We've seen several good uses of the shotgun on the main channel in law enforcement use. I think it can be a very effective tool. And one of the things that we see there is, is we see them in a law enforcement context a, out on stakeouts where instead of slung, what you would see, I'll back up just a little bit, is you would see the shotgun. Now I'm lefty, right? So I'm setting it here on the left and, and assuming, for instance, in this case, that I'm in the passenger seat of the car where your shotgun is stuck here uh, inside of your, you know, kind of thigh between you and the center console of your cruiser. Of course, if you're a driver's sider, you'd probably set it over here. That's for another day. The other context that you might use this here is if you're stacking up. So say you're gonna do an entry or something like that. In a law enforcement context, one of the things that this short stock technique really does for you is that if, as I turn sideways, if I am at a low ready position like this, of course I've got my gun slung now because I am out of the car and I you know, have a sling for my long gun, just like I have a holster for my handgun, is that uh, if I'm at a low ready position here, or even at a low carry position, then I have this fairly wide arc where I have to be. What we really kind of do with this technique is that we, we turn the gun so that our hand does stay in its um, push-pull configuration, but then I can lower this muzzle a long way. Now to make this shotgun shorter, I see, so it's just uncomfortable to bring the gun down here like this and hold on like this. And then if I had to bring the gun up in a hurry, I would have a hard time. So instead I bring this gun up a little bit tighter and a little bit closer and I keep this stock on my shoulder. Then guess what? My, my radius here is very small. It's inside my really almost my intimate space, let alone my personal space. And so I have a very small chance of muzzling somebody else on my team, if I'm a SWAT member or something like that, when I'm going to go in. The other part of that 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 lets me do in a law enforcement context 
is that if, for instance, I am going to come into a room, let's just say I had a, a corner right here that I had to go to and, and a wall right here at the edge and maybe my first guy peels off the other way, my first dude goes that way, I step through the door, see this guy from this position, again, I, he didn't get to see me until he sees me come around, rather than my muzzle, I can bring the gun up and go to work from there with the technique if I'm doing multi-man room clearing. Now, of course, if I come around this and he's five yards away, I mean, it's a big long room or he's down another hallway, we just cleared out here, I wouldn't pull this up here at 10 yards or something like that. I would instead turn the gun, see my sights and press my trigger appropriately from there because it was not an appropriate technique for the problem that I faced. Speed was not of the essence, getting a hit was of the essence at a longer distance. So that's where that context originally comes from. It is very close quarters inside of about two yards or three yards at the maximum. So if you take this technique and you push it out to five yards or 10 yards, it's not an effective technique. It's not the first technique you'd use. It's not really where your context is. That said, you might see that in the videos that Neil and I were doing this, we were doing it on steel at about seven yards. And people are like, oh, we'll see, that's the context of the technique. No, what you missed in training there is we were shooting steel. And because we were shooting steel, there's standoff distance involved in steel. So we recognized that and Rob said, hey guys, guess what? This is beyond what you would use. But all we're doing here is trying to get some, some pellets on the steel so that you get a reminder. Because we were using steel, we had to stay off of the, the problem area. We had to stay back away from the targets. Now, if you notice, when we went to the school drills, the target that was um, that we shot short struck, uh, stock like that was actually very close to us. It was two yards away. Context. So now I've set up a bit of a typical scenario, not necessarily that a private citizen would have, but kind of a use case. And so what I've set up here is just a, a barrier, a horizontal barrier like a car door and a seat like you might have in a car, right? So, so what I don't have here is I don't have a dashboard or any of those things. Man, I wish that I could get out to Neil and Stephanie's house and use the pickup truck and show you this inside of a vehicle. Maybe we will at some point right now. I just ain't got that time. Now, I know some people are gonna say, well, John, in that niche use uh, scenario, why wouldn't you use something like a bird's head shotgun? Why wouldn't you use a short barreled shotgun? And, and I don't think those are wrong choices, but again, if I want a general purpose shotgun, I can reach out a long way and touch with this guy. And I may not have every tool to, to fulfill the niche. I might have one tool that's issued to me where I can only afford one shotgun. And if I can only afford one shotgun, quite frankly, it's gonna have a stock on it. It's gonna have a good sighting system, gonna have a bright white light and probably is gonna be over 18 inches long, so I don't gotta worry about paperwork. So let's show this with an empty gun first. Now, when I sit down here, one of the things that you'll notice is I'm gonna take the sling off. And the reason I'm gonna take the sling off is, is that now I'm not holding the gun. What I'm kind of saying here is that the shotgun is sitting in my car with me kind of in a, um, you know, uh, this would be, a patrol, not a patrol necessarily, even because you keep it in the rack then, but a surveillance. This is like, I'm on a stakeout or something like that. I'm not gonna do that stuff. I'm not a cop. I'm just showing you from where this came from. Now then, if I try to bring this shotgun up and bring it through this barrier, guess what happens? It hits this, this barrier. So instead, what I'm gonna do here is, is when I see, oh look, there's a threat. So we've got a, somebody here that I consider a threat still can see the backstop from here, so we are good in that location, is that what I'm gonna do here is bring it back up over my shoulder. Now, of course, we have to be cautious forward of us, and we don't want to bring the shotgun over our legs, because shooting ourselves with a shotgun is a great way to rip a portion of our leg off and die out here on the range, certainly in your car, too. So then, what I'm gonna do here is bring the muzzle. Now, notice again here, is that how easy it is that I can get this muzzle up to him. So I'm lefty, so I'm showing you the left-hand side here. And so what I'm bringing here is I'm coming this way and then pushing out. I don't want to push all the way out here in front because again, I get too close to him. I give him the opportunity to get a hold of my firearm. Also takes me time to do. So what I do instead is, is again, I'm coming from this location where it's down here. Nice and easy, bring the shotgun up, push, pull, and I'm not gonna miss this guy from here. I'm not gonna have that problem. I'm just gonna go from here. Let's do it live, shall we? So again, I am sitting here 
in, uh, in the cruiser, those kinds of things, and I happen to be loaded, I've got control of my gun. This is as simple as this gets. So you've got to learn the push-pull technique on other videos, right? You want to be cautious with this, I'll tell you, because I've got an optic here, and if you don't do this right, you will end up eating your optic, and that is a boon to your dentist and not good for your face. Got to know what you're doing here a little bit and where that comes from and where its value is. But what I'm going to do again is I see that threat. We're going to do this nice and slow so we can see it. There's no reason to do this fast in this context. Is I bring the shotgun up to a place that I can I can get this gun over me. That's still nice and tight on my shoulder. So I'm not just letting this float off in the middle of nowhere. I'm bringing it nice and tight. Take my safety off as the gun comes up. Start to orient on my target. Now, when I do, I give a little push. Once I give that little push, easy day. See how easy that was? And again, it doesn't come up and bite me or anything like that. Now, you can see the fact that I got an A zone hit. It was not difficult to do, and the gun was controllable. Let's try it again. See my target there? 10 ring. So this is the distance that we want to do that at. Is that effective accuracy? Sure it is. Let's do it on just a little bit faster so we can see where that would come from. So again, we're sitting here in our cruiser with our shotgun or whatever. We see, oh no, here comes a bad guy. So we go here and we pop that off on him real fast. Notice again, kept that gun on my arm. So I have a point of contact there, point of contact here, pushing hard here, no recoil hardly whatsoever. And again, a 10 ring hit. That's where this technique really shines. Now, how about a private citizen context? That's a law enforcement context and clearing rooms and those kinds of things and doing multi-team stuff. That's law enforcement. Private citizen context. Well, not to put too fine a point on it, but in Kenosha, what we saw from young Kyle Rittenhouse, this was a great place that I think knowing this technique and being able to use it could have been effective. One of the things that we saw, not, you know, if you go watch my analysis of the actual events there, is that not once, but twice, when he was first attacked by Rosenbaum, he got closed in real tight. And that would have been a great time, and we will talk about that. As somebody closes distance on you, a short stock technique, if you missed and you, you messed up and you didn't have time to do it the right way uh, with, you know, with them out in front of you, would be acceptable. Second one, when you're grounded, and when he was grounded and confronted by uh, Grosskreutz pointing a gun at him, a short stock technique might have been the difference between a hit that glanced and thank God got the bicep so where he couldn't pick his arm up anymore and point the gun, and a center mass hit that stopped the threat more effectively. Right now, I have the black beard inserted in my gun, so then that way you can see what's going on here. So again, this idea here, what we're gonna first say is, is that I'm this far. Again, so, so somebody like Rosenbaum has gotten this close and has closed the distance. We know he closed the distance and he was very close in that moment. Now, of course, if I then stick this gun out in front of me, especially access my sights, even if I have a short stock, even if I've got the stock shortened all the way down, which most people won't, my stock, I tend to run all the way out, would make a mess of this. So from the perspective of this guy closing distance, we're not gonna uh, simulate the movement right now, but I have my laser academy in here. And again, from this distance here, from a yard or two yards, all I have to do is reach up and get hits. It's really easy here. So I could even back up just a little bit. He's closing the distance and I can get hits all day long. Heck, even I can get headshots if I want to. And again, I'm keeping this tucked nice and tight. I can push pull here so that I've got that. I've got it held down and, and tight into my neck. And what this gives me is it gives me really good uh, uh, lateral control. Vertical control is a little bit more difficult because the, the angle of my muzzle is a little different than what I'm used to, but it gives me excellent lateral control because I just put the muzzle right in front of me and after three, four yards, piece of cake. Now, think about this from this perspective of being grounded like this. So again, we had this situation where he was grounded, he turned around and saw. Now, if you noticed what had happened with him was that he tucked underneath his arm like this, and that's another technique, that's one you can do, but actually the problem with the under technique like this is it's very difficult to see left and right because it's angled off the center line of your body further. Maybe the same problem in terms of vertically. So we had one where we got a, a kind of a, a, a marginal hit that was very effective. But if I've been taught to short stock a gun, whether a rifle or a shotgun, again, very easy for me to simply pick up and get hits. Very easy for me to sit up here and go, oh no, there it is, and there's my problem, and get the hits that I need. And you can see that. I mean, I could literally do it all day. 
and very quickly. So I'm gonna do something just a little different here because of how high the target is in front of me. Uh, and because of my backstop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot at the three by five card in front of me. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is I have a steel behind me, but that's kind of an emergency trap and I don't want to uh, have range danger. This is a, a range kind of thing, right? But I have loaded the firearm with um, a magazine and we have a live round in the chamber. And let's see, again, so now we're at a three by five card. This would be significantly further away. A three by five would be like, uh, at this distance, would be like an A zone at maybe four or five yards. Let's see if we can get effective hits from this technique of push-pull. You gotta have this short stock here because that keeps the gun from being taken away from me, gives it a nice tight spot here, have a hold of it here, have my hands on the controls like normal. And again, all we're gonna do here is bring that up. Easy day. And you can see, I didn't even, it, it, it was fast, it was easy, everything was there. Super easy piece of cake on that. So you say, well, John, that was kind of a fluke. Oh, okay, oh no, there it is. There's another A zone hit. And, and the easiest thing all day long, I push out and there it is, and I get another A zone hit. So you can see this is a very good technique in this kind of a situation if I had an AR and I'm, da and I'm grounded. So is this technique useful for private citizens? I think it can be. I don't think that it's the end all be all, but know its context, know where it came from, know what it's good for, and know how to do it effectively, and it might help you even as a private citizen.